Uh, good morning. I'm uh, joined today by Cedric Francois, who is the CEO of a biopharma company called The Palace. But uh, importantly, Cedric is also, in addition to being a drug developer, uh, is a physician and a surgeon, uh, and also has uh, recovered from COVID-19, which Cedric, you've been, uh, you've been relatively public about, and uh, I think that's actually been very helpful to see the dialogue around. But so, first of all, thank you for joining us. How are you? Yeah, I'm great, thank you. So happy to be with you guys. Thank you, David. It is great to see you uh, well and fully on your feet. Uh, what was it like going through this virus? How, how tough was it for you? Uh, so, so I've never been this sick in my life. Um, I'll, I'll start off by saying that. Um, and uh, it was interesting because I kind of went through the biphasic nature of this disease that everybody mm. speaks about, which is real. Um, where during the first week, when you haven't developed antibodies yet, that's probably why, um, I had more like mild flu-like symptoms. And then when your immune system kicks in, um, it's important that it be a balanced immune reaction, a well-controlled immune reaction. And there are certain elements in that immune reaction that with COVID-19 tend to get out of control and seem to be the main driver of mortality, right? So it's, Turns out that it's probably not the virus that kills us, but the way in which we react to the virus that kills us. Um, that, did, that tends to kick in after one week, and it did with me. Well, actually, I wanted to ask you about this and about uh, the immune system, and particularly immunotherapy as potentially ways out of this. Um, one of the things that I've heard is, if we're going to try and redirect the immune system, we need to do it from fairly far up the immunology cascade. That obviously gets you to the complement system, which I maybe in my uh, in simple language, Cedric, I think about as the boss of the uh, of the immunology system. <laughs> but I, I've also uh, I've also heard and we've talked a lot about the importance of interleukin six inhibitors, uh, which are, are a little bit below the complement system inhibitors. What what do you think is the promise here for immunotherapy as uh, as the way out? What's the hypothesis that, that we're investigating? Talking about IL-6 and, and which anti-inflammatories out there show a lot of promise. I would like to start actually with plasmapheresis, right? So we spoke about it briefly in the context of, of serology and antibody testing. Uh, there is a, te a technology, is a big word, but kind of a method that is 100 years old or more, where you take blood from a person who has been infected, who has antibodies and other types of immunity in there, you take them out and you transfer that to another person and they get better. And uh, while there hasn't really been a full randomized controlled trial in COVID-19 to show that plasmapheresis works, there is a lot of anecdotal evidence that it does indeed significantly improve mortality. Um, and there's a lot of patients that can give plasma. Uh, there's a logistical challenge. I mean, the Red Cross is mm. trying to tackle that now. But I have, I personally, I have a lot of hope for convalescent plasma, which is what we call that to uh, help people with COVID-19 uh, when we solve for the logistical issues. And importantly, when we can identify a plasma that is truly, quote unquote, good. Remember with the antibody testing, if we take plasma from a patient that was exposed to the disease and has antibodies, but we don't know what these antibodies do, and you use that blood to treat somebody, that may not be as effective as taking someone with high titers of neutralizing antibodies. So, plasmapheresis, high hopes, thumbs of quote-unquote drug available, obviously, if you are able to sample it properly. So, uh, that then brings us to the IL-6 inhibitors. The one that people are most familiar with because it is you know, most widely available is tocilizumab, but there are other products like Kevsara uh, that interact at various levels of either IL-6 itself or the receptor for IL-6. Uh, and there, too, the anecdotal evidence so far looks promising. Um, but I think that the summary for, for this purpose, unless you want to spend hours on this, <laughs> is, that, <laughs> is that we have, we have, you know, we have a large armamentarium of drugs available to us that we can try. And, I, and again, with my own bias, I'm very excited about Alexion's, uh, who's our main competitor, you know, but uh, hats off to them for putting to work Ultomiris, which blocks complement factor C5, which I think, you know, could really make a difference. Well, one of the things that I've been worried about and been working on, Cedric, is uh, if the clinicals work out and we demonstrate effectiveness, 
are we going to be able to produce enough um, drug and drug product in order to be able to treat patients? And how are we going to be able to think about how we prioritize patients to try and understand who will benefit from what therapy? Where is your, where is your thinking on this topic? So it's this is a fabulous, fabulous question, David. It's obviously, I'm not surprised. <laughs> That's a, um, it, that, is, that is the crux of the matter at the end of the day, right? Whether, whether we speak about vaccines, whether we speak about antivirals, it's one thing to treat 100 people. It's a very different thing to treat potentially millions and millions of people. Um, there, too, I think the, the, what we spoke about is if you, if you go early in the disease and you try to treat people who have fever and you try to include the, you know, uh, I know that we think that 20% of people, you know, end up being at risk of having to go to the hospital, 5% actually end up on the ICU unit, and then, you know, 2 to 3% die. Um, but if, if let, let's say for a minute that the 90% of people who have the disease and don't require advanced measures, that's obviously an enormous demand. But mm. if you are able to take the 5% of diagnosed people, which could be less than that, uh, who end up at risk of going to the ICU unit, and you could avoid those people from ending up in the ICU unit, or even better, you take people who are in the ICU unit on a ventilator, then your numbers go down in a highly meaningful way. So all of a sudden, you're two orders of magnitude south of what the demands would be on a drug that tries to interfere earlier. And that happens to be the place where these anti-inflammatory drugs, which are on the market or in advanced clinical testing, uh, can actually be introduced and may help us reduce mortality. Has there been anybody, even if it's a sanitized example, has there been anybody or any of the interactions that, that you've had that have particularly inspired you around what people have been trying to do? There's something called the Louisville Healthcare CEO Council, which is the 12 largest healthcare companies in Louisville who sit together on the council. On there are the three CEOs of the three large hospital systems in the state of Kentucky. So now we're talking about three competing entities, normally in a ruthless fashion, right? And they came together uh, and they said, look, we want to do something where we, for our healthcare workers, can do antibody testing and, and do better RT-PCRs to allow our healthcare workers to know where they are, what, what the state of their immunity is, what that means for them, so they're more comfortable. They locked arms, forgot about competition, paid each their share, they're sharing resources with each other. I mean, unbelievable. Something that would be unthinkable up to very recently. Um, uh, the same with, with the plasma collections that are happening here in the state of Kentucky. You know, they're, they're literally shared between hospitals without questions asked, putting the patient truly first. And you see that at every level. I mean, it it's truly restores your faith in humanity if you liked it to see those things happening. Super. Thank you for joining us. It's fabulous to see you and it's fabulous to see you looking uh, well and healthy as well. <laughs> thank you, David. Well, stay safe and thank you so much for allowing me uh, to, to share some opinions.